day of renovating. No more all-nighters scrolling through my phone. You're sleeping well, too, aren't you, Marlo? Wow. Marlo's up before me for once. Good for him. I still think of Marlo as a puppy sometimes. But I suppose that's not the case anymore. Maybe he's getting too old to spend all day with his mom. I'm lucky to have such a good boy. Marlo's the perfect dog. Even if he spread mud all over the manor yesterday. I need to sort out a dog bath today. He always gets so dirty after a storm. But before I can clean him up, first I need to find him. Let's go see what my boy is up to. Maybe he's trying to help Olive with something. <laughs> Marlo, you're getting mud everywhere. Where did you go? Okay, Ava, use your mystery writer skills here. Mud, grass, the faint smell of body spray. You've been hanging around Cooper, haven't you? <coughs> oh, buddy, I can't get mad at you for following your doggy instincts. I'll give you a bath later. But first, there's a certain handyman we need to see. <coughs> Phew, that's all the weeds dealt with, then. You're early, Cooper. Did you spend the night here? Good morning, Ava. No, I'd just like to get an early start on single-handedly saving the manor. Do you happen to know anything about why our mutual furry friend is so filthy? Ah, uh, well, I heard him scratching at the front door when I got here. So I let him out to play. Just keep an eye on him when it's muddy, Cooper. Sorry, Ava. I'll keep him clean next time. Thank you. I know Marlo loves playing with you. What can I say? Dogs love me. They always have. Just ask Olive. Good morning, Olive. Sorry that the floor is... Wait, did you already clean it? Marlo's far from the first muddy dog to run through this hall, Mom. What would I do without you? I have a gift for the master of the manor, too. Look at that, Marlo. Your own towel. Egyptian cotton, Mom. Five hundred thread count. Pearlescent hue. This is the fanciest towel I've ever seen. Let's get you cleaned, Marlo. There we go. Marlo looks like a whole new dog. Olive, could I set up a bath for him somewhere? I suppose the best spot would be in Buster's old room, Mom. Buster? Who's Buster? Did I have another long-lost great-uncle you haven't mentioned yet? Buster was Marvin's dog, Mom. His favorite. Marvin set up a room for Buster down the hall from his own. He loved his dog dearly. A dog with his own room. He must have been a very good boy. Olive, could you show me Buster's room? <coughs> Wow, 
This was Buster's room? It's bigger than I imagined. This is where he slept every night. Marvin spared no expense for Buster. Oh my. You know, it was so hard to find an apartment back home that let me keep a dog. And now I can give Marlo a room of his very own. We're very lucky. Oh! <gasps> Buster loved this room, Ava. It catered to his every need. I think that your great uncle would want Master Marlowe to make use of it now. Olive, thank you. And Marlowe's grateful too, aren't you, buddy? I'd better clear away all this clutter before I start setting the room up. Come on, Marlo. Let's clean this room up so we can redecorate. <laughs> Marlo, I can't handle it if you become a mopey teen. It's all hands on deck here. I'll help too, Mom. Thanks, Olive. There's a lot of dog hair in here. It's a good thing I don't have allergies. <laughs> wow, it's looking so much better already. All right, Marlo, let's set up your bath. Hey, what's that on the ground? Let's check it out. Okay, let's see what this is. Hey, it's a dog collar. And it's beautiful. Is this real leather? Hey, Olive! Look what I found! It's Buster's old collar! Oh, um... It's the fanciest collar I've ever seen. Is this custom made? Ava, I'm going to give the floor another sweep. I think I've accidentally upset Olive, Marlo. I don't want to pry too much, but I hope she's okay. This room might bring back memories. <coughs> Luckily, I know the right way to a butler's heart is through her teacup. Marlo! Come here, boy! <coughs> it's time to get you washed. <coughs> Ava, if I could make a suggestion. <laughs> what is it, Olive? Perhaps if Master Marlowe were to choose a bathtub that was to his liking, maybe then he would be more inclined to use it. Olive, you're a genius. What do you think, buddy? Which tub is up to scratch? This one is perfect, and Marlo thinks so too. All that's left is to finally give Marlo a bath. Arr. Ava, I do believe he is washed. Okay, he's just so cute with his soap coat, but I guess we should dry him now. Arr, arr. Ugh. 
Marlo, I told you off for ten minutes. We both know you're dry. I know you like belly rubs, but I need my arms too. <gasps> Olive, can you please get me another towel? Mom, do you not think adding some storage would be in order? But, Marlo. So that you may store more towels, of course. Of course. Come here, buddy. The more towels, the merrier. Huh? Perhaps when you're finished, I might offer my assistance with grooming, Marlow. Ava, we've run into a slight problem. Huh? What do you mean, Olive? I am sadly unable to put my grooming skills to use. Without the proper table installed. Really, Olive? Quite tragic, indeed. Would any of these do? This will do quite well. Lovely choice, Mom. Now, up you go, Master Marlow. We need to have a look at those claws of yours. Roar? Olive, I was wondering if we could stop for a tea break. A good idea, Mom. I'm rather parched. Now, do you want lapsang, chai, hibiscus, dandelion? Um, black, please? Splash of milk? Mmm, this is good tea, Olive. I always feel more relaxed after a warmer cup of tea. I hope you feel the same way. Did Marvin like tea, Olive? He did, Ava. I often sat down for a cup with him. I'm sorry, Olive. I guess a lot of things in this manner remind you of him. Ava, about that collar... It was a gift from Hazel. Roar? Marvin adopted Buster as a puppy, and Hazel always had a soft spot for dogs. She began visiting almost every day to play with Buster. They had their own special bond. Hazel visited to see me at first, but once I introduced her to Marvin and Buster... Well, Buster was the reason why Hazel and Marvin became so close. That collar holds a lot of history. Oh, Olive, I'm glad that you told me. I hope that you're okay. Thank you, Ava. I think we ought to get back to it. Marlowe's waiting. Huh? The room's looking better already. What do you think, Marlo? Marlo? Oh. Marlo! Looks like we'll have to give you another bath. Perhaps we should keep a better eye on Master Marlowe to avoid further uncleanliness? 
What I can't understand is how he became so messy so quickly. <gasps> hmm, now what friend of Marlowe's do I know that enjoys dirt? I guess there's a groundskeeper I need to talk to. Cooper, do you know anything about the mud all over Marlowe's paws? Oh, Ava, well, Marlowe wanted to come back outside, and I had a perfect stick for fetch. Cooper, look, I know that you like playing with Marlowe, but think of the manor. We need to keep it in good shape. Muddy paw prints are bad news. Well, it's just that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ava. The thing is, Marlowe really reminds me of the dog I had as a kid. You had a dog? And it looked like Marlowe? Not really. But he had the same spirit. My boy was a golden retriever. I really miss him. Oh, Cooper, I had no idea. What was his name? Beckham. Named after one of the greats. Beckham, the American soccer player, right? Well, he played for Los Angeles eventually, but he's best known for his time at Manchester. Which is why he'll always be remembered as one of the game's best midfielders. And that's why you named your dog after him? Well, my Beckham was even better at football. Listen, I want to head to the Glade today to do some writing. If you want, you can play with Marlowe all morning, as long as you keep him clean. I'd love that. And Marlowe sounds excited too. But if he runs through mud... I've set up a bath in Buster's old room. You can clean him in there. Buster's old room? Upstairs down the hallway? I'll check it out. Hey, buddy. Do you think Ava would like it if we did some work on the room while she's out? You're right, Marlo. She'd love that. What do you think, Marlo? Pretty great, right? Do you think Ava will be happy? <laughs> I agree, buddy. We do make a handsome team. Cooper, who are you talking to? Oh, uh, no one. I wasn't talking. Look at me here, talking to the dog like a perfectly normal person. Good idea, Marlo. Let's replace these walls next. What do you think of this wall, Marlo? Is it up to your standards? Good point. Hmm. We can do better. Help me pick something out. <coughs> you know, Marlo, this was Beckham's favourite colour too. <coughs> hey, remember what I taught you this morning? Want to try again? <laughs> Amazing block, Marlowe! 
The best goalkeeper since Tim Howard. Roar? He was... Actually, never mind. I hope Ava will be happy with this. Oh, wow, it looks beautiful. But I wonder who cleaned it up, and so quickly. Huh, maybe Marlo and his muddy paws had something to do with it. <coughs> Serena's texting me. I'm sure Serena can handle him for me. She's a good friend. Well, it's about time I set up this area and get some writing in. Where should I start, though? There's so much left to write. I know. I'll follow Cooper's advice from last time and write more of the ending. But with a twist. I'm getting some good work done here. This glade really is helpful. Let's see if it will help me decide the item that will reveal the secret safe room. They're going to get quite the fright when they open it. <laughs> hmm. I should probably unmute my phone. It has been a while. Wow. Serena left a lot of messages. I should answer her. Serena, calling me won't make me tell you my book's twist ending. Ava? You answered! Jack? Oh no. Ava? Are you there? Jack! Hi! Wow, I've been trying to get a hold of you forever, baby! Talk to me. What's this about a twist ending? Yeah, about that. Don't tell me you've written a whole book already. I always knew you had it in you. What's it been, five, six years? Ha! Never doubted you. Jack, uh, we, we need... Well, I mean, there might have been a little doubt. What with the complete radio silence. Jack, really? But that's behind us, baby. Tell me where you are, and I can get that book printed in two shakes. <laughs> What am I going to do? Oh, wow, Cooper, the room looks fantastic. What a nice surprise. Well, Marlowe's really the one who did all the work. I just provided a hammer and opposable thumbs. In that case, praise redacted. Marlowe, you did an excellent job. What a clever dog. I mean, I helped a little.
Hmm, the door over here leads to the balcony. But Marlo won't be able to open it if he needs to go outside. Wow, there's so much you can't do without opposable thumbs. And I don't love having to get up in the night when Marlo needs to do his business. It's okay, buddy. We can put in a doggy door for you. Ava, Cooper, this room is looking marvelous. Perhaps I could assist further? The more the merrier, Olive. Perhaps we could get a mat on this floor for Master Marlowe's delicate paws. A big dog calls for a big doggy door, right, Marlo? <coughs> Installing a doggy door is pretty easy, no matter the size. I made my first one at seven years old. Wow, Cooper, that's pretty impressive. Well, not everyone felt the same way when they saw the hole in the door. Look at that, Marlo. Now you can come and go as you please. Well, onto the balcony, at least. I don't want you getting muddy. You'll have a lovely view out there too, Marlo. I hope you're not scared of heights. What's next? Hey, Marlo. Can you help us pick out some wall art? I think some art would really liven this room up. But what kind of art do dogs like? I believe I have some suggestions, Mom. Okay, Marlo, this is your room, so the choice is yours. What do you like? Oh. That's extraordinary. This exact same art hung in Buster's room. I guess it makes sense that two dogs would have similar tastes in art. Perhaps. But I think the two dogs have a lot in common. We should put up some hooks for extra storage in here. Time to hang some hooks. My first instinct is still to ask you for permission, Olive. There is no need for that, Ava. I know, it's just an old habit from renting apartments and wanting to hang up art. Trying to hide Marlowe during inspections, losing deposits over a dusty ceiling fan. I assure you, Ava, I keep the ceiling fans around here dust-free. Hey, Ava, would you say that you're really hooked on renovations? I would never say that, Cooper, because I'm a professional writer. My jokes are good. Oh, are they? Give me an example. Did you ever hear the one about the handyman who thought he was funny?
It seems like we should get that mat down before Marlowe has any more, uh, unscheduled expeditions. Well, I agree. What do you think, buddy? Which one do you want to wipe your grubby little paws on? Huh? I shan't be responsible for laundering a mat treated in such a manner. However, I must concede that the Hound has made a fine choice. Yes, the Hound has, hasn't he? Oh? Quite. I am curious to see if he can do as well choosing a rug for the floor. What do you say, Master Marlowe? What sort of rug strikes your fancy? We'll be scraping your hair out of it, Marlowe. So no frilly little decorative rugs. Yeah, Marlowe. It needs to be strong so it can be, uh, laundered over and over. I've had quite enough of this nonsense. No one leaves detritus around Blackwood Manor. Not even a hound. <laughs> Dogs are furry, Olive. They shed. I'll just have to be good about cleaning up. Yeah, I think you're being a hair too rough on our boy Marlow. <laughs> Don't let these children get to you, Marlow. Which do you prefer? Brilliant. If you'll excuse me, I need to attend to plans for tonight's dinner. Oddly enough, you two appear to have all of this well in hand. Olive is right. We've really done a lot here in not much time. Marlowe's going to be a spoiled boy. He sure is. Are you okay, Ava? I'm fine. Why do you ask? Normally, I'd expect you to be doing flips over making Marlowe his own room. You just don't seem yourself. I didn't really want to get into it, but I'm just feeling the pressure of my book contract, I guess. In the Glade today, I finally figured out the big twist. That's great! It is, but it also means that now the real work begins. Now that I know what I'm writing, I actually have to write it. If it helps your motivation, I ordered your first book from the library. It's coming in next week. Cooper, I could have given you a copy. I would have written something nice when I signed it. Oh, but I don't mind paying. It's only right. Cooper, you do know that the library is free, right? Um, <laughs> of course. In principle is what I meant. <laughs> like, duh. That's what I thought. <gasps> what is it, Marlo? Who's there? Let's go check it out. Look at Marlowe go. Whoever it is, they must be carrying treats. Victor must be here. We should find him. I don't like the idea of him snooping around unattended. Ah, he's just a busybody. Always has been. He's harmless. Cooper, I'm not in the bushes. I can't hear you. How can you be bushed? The day just started. Victor doesn't seem to be here. Maybe Pepper got ahead of him. Let's meet him at the gate. I'm nervous. 
I'm still waiting for that exemption for the stay of demolition. I hope he's bringing it. I'm sure it's fine. They'll never let... You can't take your eyes off him for a second when Pepper is around. Let's see what they're up to. I've never been back here before. It's kind of peaceful. Eva, there's somebody there. Stay here. Hey, scaredy cat. Want to come see what you were afraid of? It's a statue. I swear it was moving. I wasn't that scared. If that's the story you want to tell, I will 100% go along with it. Let's pull all these vines off and see what this statue is. I've had my fill of clearing brush lately. If only the manor had a groundskeeper. Do you know who this is? Look at the plaque. It's Marvin. It's not all of him, though. Where is his head? And is that Buster? You know, he really looked a lot like Marlowe. This statue is pretty hacked up. Someone really went to town on it. We should look for that head. It's kind of creeping me out. Exactly what I would expect a totally not scaredy cat to say. Marlowe and Pepper don't seem to mind. That head's not getting any more lost. Let's play with the dogs. You know, all jokes aside, we really need to clean up this area. What a mess. It's not our fault. Nobody expects to be looking for a decapitated head from a statue of their missing great uncle. Do you have any ideas about that starry sky riddle we found in the book in the statue? It's really bugging me. It says in the riddle that brain surpasses brawn. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll figure it out before me. Reverse engineer it. If you'd written that in a book, what would you be trying to describe? Hmm, I guess I would... Found it! Wow! Marvin was so young then. Look at that baby face. Really? I thought he was born looking 50 years old and stayed that way. I really miss that guy. I know you do, Cooper. I feel like I miss him, and I never even met him. We should put that head back on and clean up the statue. It's undignified. Huh? Wonder what Marlow found? Probably a rat.
What pepper? What? What is it with dogs today? Marlow, Pepper, whatever are you barking at? <coughs> Come now. I believe I saw Ava and Cooper heading towards the front gardens. Spit spot, Master Marlow. <laughs> Best not to go wandering with unsavory characters like Victor around. It was wonderful. I really think my novel is coming along. I was able to get so much done. That's great, Ava. I'm happy that place could help you out. Hey, can you pass me the polish? Hmm? Oh yeah, here. There were a couple hiccups, but you're right. It was really nice to be at the Glade again. Hiccups? But the storm damage should all be gone. Oh, it is. The Glade looks beautiful. I was talking about... How did you know the storm damage was gone? What? Uh, you, you mentioned it earlier? No, I didn't. I... I'm sure you did. Cooper, you wouldn't happen to know anything about that. Would you? Huh. <laughs> Caught me. I noticed it yesterday after I left and thought it would be a nice surprise. You liked the Glade so much, it seemed a shame if you couldn't use it anymore. Thanks, Cooper. I really appreciate that. Maybe we can even have another picnic sometime. I'd like that. Oh, hey, Olive. Marlo. And Pepper? You're still here? <laughs> Ava! Cooper! You fixed Marvin's statue! Oh yeah, it was a quick fix. But someone took the head off. Any idea who? I can't imagine why anyone would have done such a thing. Hey Olive, did Marvin ever spell his name with a capital V in the middle? No, Mom. He was a stickler for proper grammar and punctuation. Why do you ask? Hmm, never mind. It's probably nothing. You two really have done an excellent job restoring their statue. He always said I would get a head in life. I didn't think it would be his head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm here all week. Come on, let's get back before Cooper thinks of any more jokes. Marlo, do you want to go and choose a new bed for your room? Arf, arf. You go ahead, Mom. I'll catch up with you.
I could use a nap, Marlo. How about you? Oh. Fair enough. But we should put a bed in here for you anyway. Oh, oh. He's so excited. He might not sleep at all tonight. No, he'll tire himself out soon enough. <gasps> Good sitting, Marlo. Now, if we can just teach you to shake. Hey, Cooper? Did something about that statue feel off to you? The inscription, maybe? I'm not sure what you mean. Anyway, let's focus. One mystery at a time. You're right. We've got so much left to do here, too. Marlo will need somewhere to store toys and other stuff. And a doghouse for when he's outside. We need somewhere for all your toys, Marlo. Your slimy, drool-soaked toys. Huh? Okay, Marlo, which one do you like best? Oh. Hey, Marlo, that toy belongs to Pepper, right? Maybe it's time to give it back? Oh. 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 Hey, I think she wants you to have it, boy. Oh. Maybe I can get you some new toys next time I'm in town, Marlo. Dry ones. Oh. A wardrobe would be useful for storing Master Marlo's belongings, Mom. That's true. I can store his dog treats, his nail clippers, his shampoo, his blankie, his adorable little raincoat, that old shoe he's obsessed with, for some reason. Oh. Now that Marlo has his own wardrobe, we'll have to fill it in with cute outfits. What do you think, Marlo? Should we get you a sailor suit? Oh, a bumblebee costume. Oh. I fear that might impact your hound's sense of dignity, Ava. <laughs> oh. This room is looking fantastic, but something's missing. Hmm. 
Hey, Olive, did Buster have any plants in his room? He did indeed, Ava. He was quite the canine horticulturist. Well, Marlo always used to snuggle up under my fern. I think he'd love some plants in here, too. That's a great idea, Ava. Plants could give this room a soothing vibe. Oh, I should ask Sam about this. I wanted to call her today anyway. Sam, how's it going? Are you holding up okay? Oh, come on, Sam. A great girl like you? She won't be single for long. Ava, are you okay? Why are you retching? Do you need an aspirin? Water? Tea? Uh, sorry, Olive. It's just, uh, hay fever. We need some dog-friendly plants for a very special, very good boy. Yes, that sounds perfect. Thank you. And Ava says thank you too. Sam says that some dog-friendly potted plants will bring the room to life. Then a larger planter box will give the room an outdoorsy feel, which dogs love. Well, okay, that sounds good. Let's get back to work. Oh. Oh, yeah. These will do just dandy. Sam really knows what she's doing. Oh, no, Ava, y you aren't allergic, are you? Oh, um, no, Cooper. I'm fine. Just mild hay fever, is it? <laughs> yep, exactly. Sure. So, which ones are we digging? Ha! Huh, so you do admit it. Sam rocks at her job. Good thing I called her. Okay, okay, I get it. She's great. You know, maybe I should call our local caffeine expert, too. Hi, Michael. Oh my god, it's so great to hear your voice. Could you please deliver an espresso? I'm being mentally tested a lot. Make it a double. Thank you. You're a real gem. Oh yeah, could you bring a hot chocolate with rainbow sprinkles too? Yeah, of course it's for Cooper. Okay, thanks. Boop. I mean, bye. Boop. <laughs> nice try, Ava. You didn't really call Michael. It's time for you to have your own garden, isn't it, buddy? I suppose you're right, Cooper. My good boy deserves a little garden of his own, but still, no digging, mister. Good choice, Marlo. It really completes your room. Sure does. Sam said these are totally... Dog safe? Wow, really? I totally didn't hear earlier. I was going to say low maintenance, but okay. Oh, sorry, Cooper. Low maintenance, too? Sam really did do a nice job picking out these. And we did a great job setting them up.
Oh my, what a difference all the botanic life makes to the room. Would you agree, Miss Pepper? <coughs> oh, Marlo, even your pal Pepper approves. Huh? We should probably get you home, girl. I'll give Victor a call. Pepper, where are you going? <coughs> Looks like Pepper knows her way home. Now that's impressive. She is quite a sophisticated specimen. With a rather regal look, if I may add. Oh. You know, it's pretty odd Victor hasn't come looking for her. If it were Marlo, I'd be worried sick. Indeed, Mom. Perhaps he failed to notice being so preoccupied in his strange little world. Maybe that's him now? I'd better check. Wow, somebody's popular today. Who keeps texting? Wait, it's not Michael, is it? No, it's my ex, the literary agent, Jack. He called earlier today when I was in the Glade, and I may have accidentally answered. I thought it was Serena talking, and I immediately started blabbing about my book. I figured out the final twist today. And now Jack knows about it. He's not going to leave me alone. Ava, listen here. Time and time again, I've seen your strength emerge in this manner. And from what you've told me of him, this Jack character possesses no such fortitude. I have no doubt that your book will be spectacular, and that no man can hold you back. Olive, that was powerful. I don't have a speech that good to give you, but I believe in you too, Ava. Thank you, Olive. That's just what I needed to hear. Now, Mom, I believe you mentioned an ending twist. Sorry, Olive. My lips are sealed. Okay, Marlo, let's give Olive and Cooper a break from my dramas. Let's go check my bedroom to see if you've left any of your toys in there. Oh, hey there, Olive. Can I help you with something? If it's not a bother, Cooper, I could use a hand with something. There's a book in the library I wish to revisit, but it's on the very top shelf. You want me to reach up and grab it? Of course not, Cooper. I'm more than capable. But I would be glad if you fix the library ladder. One of the rungs has splintered, and these gloves aren't very thick, you see. Sure thing, Olive. Lead the way. There we go. All those top shelf novels are within reach again. Thank you, Cooper. Although I must admit, the book I'm seeking is a guilty pleasure. Hey, Olive. Do you have any books you'd recommend for a novice reader? Cooper, I've got a whole shelf set aside, in case you ever ask that question. Wow, okay. It's just that I see you and Ava reading all the time, and it makes you so happy. 
And since we became friends again, I've wanted to share in that. I suppose that you'll want to sleep in your own room now, right, Marlo? Roar? But you can come in here anytime you want. If you're scared by a storm, or want company, or you just get lonely, you can still sleep in here every night if you want to. Huh? I love this old photo, Marlo. Look at how young we were. I really should frame it. Then you'll always be here with me. <coughs> Marlo, I felt so drawn to you the moment we were together. And now that I know about Marvin and Buster, I feel more connected to the manor than ever. For the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm part of a bigger family. <coughs> I know you feel it too, boy. It's getting late, Marlo. Do you want your mom to tuck you in tonight? <coughs> It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune... You're telling me that this is one of your favourites, Olive? To be honest, I've always preferred sense and sensibility. But this is a good starting point. Cooper, what you said before about us being friends again... You must know I never stopped considering you a friend, even when we were not talking. Really? I was angry for a long time, Cooper. I convinced myself that you'd let the manor go to ruin. But I also knew, deep down, that you were going through the same grief that I was. I felt awful leaving you alone in the manor, Olive. But staying here, after Marvin... I understand. It was painful for me to leave. It was painful for you to stay. Seeing you repair the statue, Marvin, reminded me just how close you two were. I'm sorry that I made you feel like we weren't friends anymore. Let's make a promise, Olive. To never lose sight of our friendship again. That's a promise I can make easily. And happily, Cooper. It's uh, getting a little dusty in this library. Should we go check on Ava and Marlowe? This room looks incredible. Cooper, Olive, thank you for all your help. Anything for our Marlowe. Yes, it's been good to have a hound in the manor again. I had a complicated relationship with Buster, and when Marlowe first arrived... It must have been shocking seeing a dog who looked so much like him. Quite, Mom. But Marlowe is special in his own way. And Buster was a great dog. Hazel was right about that. Oh, by the way... Serena called, and she wants to visit Blackwood Manor. I suppose we'd better prepare the guest room before she arrives. <laughs> wow, his snores sound just like Beckham's did. Beckham used to sleep at the foot of my bed every night. I've missed this noise. Speaking of snoring, I think it's bedtime. Good night, Olive. Good night, Cooper.
<sighs> I've made some good progress on the book today. It's important to keep that going. Especially now that Jack and Peacemaker are on my case about it. There's still so much to go. I've got the ending figured out, but nothing else. Marlo, <coughs> you want to sleep in Mom's room tonight? <coughs> I would have missed you too, boy. Okay, let's get some rest. <coughs>